What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review for To Have and To Hold Charlotte, Season 1, Episode 6. So this episode, um, it, it was sort of a filler. It wasn't really a whole lot there. So we're going to probably get through this review pretty quickly. Um, we start the episode off where we left. We start the episode where we left off last week. <clears throat> Excuse me. With Christine and Daryl. Christine thinks she's pregnant. They took a pregnancy test. She's relieved. Daryl's not. Big problem. She really is not ready to have kids. And I don't know. I said this last week, so I'm not going to dwell on the point. I just don't know if that's what she wants at all. And Daryl does. And so he was a little, you could see that he was a little disconcerned. That's not the word I'm looking for. A little concerned is the word I'm looking for. About the fact that they had totally different reactions to her pregnancy test coming back negative. And her thing is, we just need to plan for it. We need to plan for it. And he was like, how do you plan for something you've never experienced? He was like, when have we planned for anything? And I like, like, we've just kind of done it. And I 100, excuse me, I 120% agree with where Daryl is coming from. Like, if you're ready to have kids, just have kids. Like, you can't plan for kids. I mean, I know people try to, and you can, I mean, there's certain things you can put in place for children, but at the end of the day, it's an unpredictable experience from beginning to end. And I just don't know if that's what Christine wants. I, I, you know, far be it for me to make a decision in the little snippet of life that they share with us. But honestly, I think that Christine just does not want children. And I think that she needs to be honest with Daryl and tell Daryl that maybe she's changed her mind. I think that at one point she thought might she might have been open to it. But I think that she's really happy with her life now. And I think she's really okay with not having kids. So I see that maybe being a big problem moving on down the line um and then later on in the episode she decides that a good way to spice up the marriage is to take some sexy bedroom pictures for daryl that's cool but you do know that all of that that's that leads to sex which leads to babies so you try to turn them on knowing he won't have kids i don't know if that was the best okay cool anyway um, but she gets <laughs> she gets Peter and um and um Josh to help uh, help her with that later on in the episode. It's funny. Um, all right, Tayati and um David. Oh, the two of them are breaking my heart. I think I might come back to them. I think I might come back to them. Okay, Elaine and um. Elaine and Yandri. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Yandri. I'm sorry, Yandri. Elaine is dealing with possibly having some corporal tunnel in her wrist. She's a, a hairstylist, and she's been a hairstylist by trade for many, many years. And that un- unfortunately is a hazard of the profession. Is you know, you your wrist for over time. And right now, because of some financial setbacks that they that Yandrick has had on his um, side, they really need the income from Elaine. And let me say this. I'm really surprised. Um, I'm happily surprised, but I'm really surprised that they are being so candid about their financial situation. Because, you know, the way this, this season started, they were so, you know, we the queen bees of the queen city and we this and I'm going to have this $15,000 brunch for my husband who said he really didn't want a brunch. You know what I'm saying? And so I really expected them to just kind of keep up that appearance. Um, so I'm really surprised that they're kind of pulling the curtain back and letting us see like, like real talk shit happens. And unfortunately that's the life of an entrepreneur. You know what I mean? So he had some bad, I think he said it was a restaurant that didn't do so well. And so now they're sort of in this situation where they need Elaine's income. And if she can't work because of the corporal tunnel or whatever might be going on with her wrist, um, that will be a really big blow to them financially. And Elaine is really, really worried about it. And what, you know, Yandri is just keeps saying how he, he really doesn't like the fact that she has to work so hard. It really bothers him. Like he really just seems like a man's man to say, look, this is my, my responsibility is to make sure that my family is taken care of, that I am taking care of my family. And I really don't like the fact that my wife has to work. Like if she wants to work, that's cool. But I don't like the fact that she has to work. And you see that it really bothers him. There was a scene 
um, where he went to pick her up from work. And she was like, hey, I got four more clients coming in. I'm probably going to be here until about 10 o'clock tonight. And his face was like, 10 o'clock. And she's like, yeah, like I got four more clients coming through here. And her mom came in and she said, you know, her mom had been helping out after her father passed away, you know, helping with the kids, had moved in with them. And it was a, a big help. But then her mom found herself a little boo thing and sort of kind of went on, you know, got on with, with her life. And, you know, Elaine is not begrudging her that, but of course she's, um, you know, missing that help. And so I feel like Elaine and Yandra got a, kind of gave us some real, some real stuff. And I, it's, it's honestly at the beginning of the season, I didn't think that's what we would get from them. Um, but we see that later on she goes to the, um, doctor and it's not as bad as they probably thought, but it's definitely, she's got some inflammation in her wrist and she's going to have to really um, make some adjustments. You know, the doctor says she's got some things she needs to do. And if there's anything that she doesn't have to necessarily do with her hands, then she probably should refrain from it. You know, um, will it lead to surgery? Maybe. But it sounded like it wasn't as bad as they will maybe have been anticipating. So hopefully, um, you know, but it's definitely a hard job. Um, hairstylists on their feet all day, you know, whole lot of hazards to that. So anyway, then we see Ursula and um, Clint. I was going to call him Curtis and his name, his name is not Curtis. Ursula and Clint. Ursula is so pretty, y'all. She had her, she's pretty anyway, but there was the scene where they're talking in her hair. With the, I don't know the way she did her makeup in that scene or what, but she's so pretty. And they kind of revisited her working out of town. And she was like, you know, we really need to talk about this. Like she said that Clint has sort of gone into his virtual reality world. We saw him with the vir with the virtual reality glasses on and he was playing poker and, you know, all that stuff. And she was like, look, we can ignore it all we want, but we got to talk about it, you know. And Ursula said, look, in this relationship, I have blindly followed you into a lot of situations. and." All I'm asking is that you do the same for me now. All I'm asking is that you give me what I've always given you, which is support. Even if I didn't always see what the tunnel, what the light at the end of the tunnel was looking like, I'm asking that you trust me and that you give me that. And Clint's thing was, I do trust you. I love you. I just felt like you were doing this. You had, You weren't asking me. You were telling me. And therefore, it wasn't an inclusive decision. And then I also never want to get to the point where I feel like you don't need me. And that is what my biggest fear is, is that we'll get to the end of this and you will figure out you don't need me. And again, it was an honest conversation. It was a very transparent conversation. And I think it's a real conversation. You know, that's where you see a lot of empty nesters run into problems because having to readjust what the definition of their of the marriage is without children and without the things that bring that bring the children bring with them that distract us from the day to day you know what i mean we don't have to pick them up from basketball practice or swimming practice or this thing the other or it's not all about the kids now it's about us but it's a redefined us because we ain't 20 no more you know what i mean when it was just us and we were 20 years old having children versus 20 years later and all the kids are out the house. We're not those people. And so that is what they're dealing with. They're dealing with, okay, we're empty nesters now, but what does that mean, mean for us individually? And what does that mean for us to come back together and how do we work through it? And ultimately Clint was like, look, I don't like this. I do not like the idea of my wife being away from me four days out of the week. However, I am going to support her. I'm going to support this. You know, um, she's starting this company and I'm going to support the company. So I can respect that. But Clint is not happy with it. He, he, he made it clear that that is not what he wants. But he also made it clear that he will support his wife. So I thought that that was um, pretty good. Now. I said, I was gonna get, I, let's let's go ahead and talk about um, they didn't really show a lot with Peter and um, Josh this week. Um, they talked a little bit about them when we got to the psychic reading, but we'll get that. We'll get to there in a minute. Well, reading their chart. We'll get to that in a second. So, so Tayati and um, David, we start the episode off with them having separate conversations. David is talking to his nephew, who is also um, 
in his law firm, a partner in his law firm, and he's talking about estate planning. And he's like, this is a very real conversation that I need to understand. And I need to figure out what, what me and um, my wife are doing as it relates to how I'm going to plan my estate and moving forward with that. Um, on the other side, you see um, Tayati, excuse me, talking to a friend of hers. And she's talking about how this situation is... Um, very much needed. She thinks that, you know, it's helping her figure some things out. David, on the other hand, is like, look, I'm I'm kind of over this whole situation. Like, either we're going to be together or we're not. I need to know. I need to get out of this whole pattern. I need to figure it out. Um, we see the two of them doing, um, trimming, doing, trimming the tree. And they said that's their tradition. Like, that is what they do every year. Um, cause we know we already had Thanksgiving. So this is the time period between Thanksgiving and Christmas and they're doing their tree trimming, which is their normal routine, which of course they're trying to keep up all their routines for the sake of their boys. And again, it's a very bittersweet thing for both of them. You know, David feels very uncomfortable. He was like, it's just a weird feeling. It's just not the same. It's just, you know, we're going through the motions, but something just ain't right. And then on the flip side, you have, um, you have um, Tayati saying it's really weird because, hey, this could be the last time we do this as a family. Who knows what, you know, where we're going to be next year with everything going on with the nesting and the trial separation and like, is, where are we going to be? And so David, I think Tayati is comfortable in what they're doing right now. And she's cool with continuing to do the nesting thing versus David, who's like, look, I'm done with this. I don't like it. And I need to know what we're doing. We're in this whole pattern that I don't, I, I need to figure out where we're going. Are we going left or are we going right? What's going on with this? So I'll get, <clears throat> get back to them in a second. So then we, um, Ursula and Clint are hosting um, a gathering of all the couples where they're getting their charts read, uh, their astrological charts read as a couple. And I've, you know, I've had, you know, you read those books and you know what your sign says and all that stuff, but I've never had an actual reading. I thought it might be very interesting to get a reading, but honestly, there really was nothing earth shattering that happened as a result of the people of the reading of the charts. Um, you had Christine and Daryl. And what they said is that Daryl needs to be surrounded by pretty things, a la his wife. And all of his toys, you know, nice house, nice cars, got the little toys and trinkets that Christine does not take criticism well. And of course, she pushed back on that. Just proving the point. Just proving the point. <laughs> you can't take criticism well. So when you're told you can't take criticism well, you think that that's not that, you know, proving the point. Um, Peter and Josh. Josh, um, Peter has to be careful how he criticizes Josh, which we saw that early on with the, with the, with the episode when, um, I think it was episode two with, um, with Josh not really liking conflict and not really liking to argue. Um, what would they say about Peter? I don't know what they said about Peter, but basically that was what was pretty much said about Josh. Um, Elaine and Yandrick, both of them are attention whores. Again, no shock there. Um, they like, you know, they like the attention. Clinton, Ursula. Oh, they both tell little white lies. And Clint was like, he gave an example. He was like, yeah, if I go to a cigar bar and you ask me how many cigars I had and I say I had one when I really had two, that is a little white lie. And that's a lie that you tell to avoid the argument because you know if I say I had two cigars, I'm going to hear, hear your mouth for the next two hours. So I'm just going to say I had one cigar. You might roll your eyes a little bit, but at least I don't have to have this argument. So, you know, and then he going to ask her what type of lie, what white lies you tell me. She's talking about some catch me if you can. So I know that's right. Don't you never admit to nothing. Nothing. You'll never give it to him at all. <laughs> um, but then they got to 
Tayati and David's chart. I personally feel like nothing on their chart should have been discussed since they were not there to one hear it and or or decide whether they wanted the group to hear it. I don't think any of that should have been shared. Any of it, whether it was good, I don't care if it was good news, bad news, or indifferent. I personally feel like they were wrong for letting that conversation take place. But neither here nor there. What was said about um, them was. Again, what we already know, that both of them are in a very dark place. Now, the guy didn't get into all of the details, but he did say that they're in a very dark place, the darkest part of the chart that you could be on. And he was saying, you know, if, you know, as their friends, you guys really need to stick with them and be there for them and reach out to them and let them know y'all are there to support them and so forth and so on. And again, no big shocker there. I feel like everybody already knew that. Now, my problem with that conversation was Christine felt vindicated in what she said earlier at the um when they were having the pizza party about she don't think it's gonna work out. See, here's the difference, Christine. That's not what the that's not what the guy who was reading the chart said. He didn't say what you said. He didn't say, Oh, it ain't gonna work out. This ain't gonna work. What he said was that they're both in a very dark place and y'all should be there to support him. Support them. I don't understand how you felt vindicated. I don't understand how you felt like what you said compared to what they were talking about. I, I, I don't see what you're talking about. It ain't the same thing, boo. It's not. Um, <clears throat> and you talking about something, you could be an astrologer because you could have read their charts for free. That man ain't say nothing that the rest of us didn't already know, unless it was some stuff they edited out. But hell, I knew everything they said. Um, so I guess I could be an astrologer too. But um, but ultimately, it was just a fun little afternoon. Like He didn't say nothing again on camera. That was real shady or anything like that, I didn't think. I thought it was all in good fun. Like I said, my only disagreement was that I don't feel like Tayati and Davis' information should have been shared with the group. But neither here nor there. So while all of this is going on, David and Tayati have a conversation, a very serious conversation. And ultimately, what David is saying to her is, either we're going to shit or get off the pot. What are we doing here? I don't like it. I told you I didn't like it. But at the end of the day, if we're going to work, I want all of it. I want my wife back. I want us to be intimate. I want us to be together. I don't want it to just be surface, me move back in the house, and we go back to what we were doing before. If that's what's going to happen, then we need to make a decision about what where our future really is. And then Tayati was saying how because she grew up the way she grew up, which basically no family. Parents died when she was young. Um, didn't have any brothers and sisters, that when she finally made a decision to get married, she waited to get married because she knew that for her, marriage was not going to be, um, it wasn't going to be a revolving door. It was going to be for the long haul. And that what is really scaring her is that she knows that marriage is not working right now. She knows it's not working, but she is so afraid to pull the trigger. She's so afraid to finally make that final decision to say, okay, it's over. Um, she said, you know, have you noticed that we haven't even used the word divorce? We haven't even said it, you know, and she was very upset, which I can understand. Both of them were probably very upset. Um, but they both decided that they're not ready. They're not ready to go back to living together full time, but not necessarily ready for divorce. But David is very much like we need to make a decision and we need to make a decision now because I can't live my life in a whole pattern. I'm not going to do it. Like I told you what I wanted from the beginning, but I also want all of you. I don't want a surface you. So that's kind of what we got um, tonight, you guys. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in the comments. Peace.